Hello there everyone, UXW Bill here once again. Now it's been a while since I've done a car video or even had much to say about any of our various unroadworthy vehicles. So what I have right here for those who might start asking in the very near future is another car video specifically about this, a 2012 Chevrolet Impala automobile. Now, unlike the other vehicles in our fleet, I have never actually driven this one. In fact, this is my grandfather's car, and I've heard some negative press about these. The key keeper was one of the first people who ever complained about the car. He said he wasn't fond of the uh, way the interior materials and the power window motors just seemed to feel. He said that they had an awfully cheap feel to them. I know that my grandfather drove this car for a while. He traded in a 2010 Mercury Grand Marquis to buy this. And then he went and found himself a 2009 Mercury Grand Marquis. That's probably the most scathing commentary of all that I have heard. However, I've also heard some folks on YouTube saying that these cars are not exactly GM's finest hour. Now, I reserve judgment until I've actually driven this car. So I guess that's what I'm going to do for your viewing pleasure today. And then, as a free added service, value added service, I'm going to offer my opinion because we all know that UXW Bill's opinions are priceless. One thing I very definitely have an opinion about is this car's remote starter. It is equipped with one. I'm just going to see if I can make this work here. See, so I think we're supposed to lock the door and then press the button. And by golly, it did. It started right up. I believe this has a 3.5 liter V6 engine in it. Definitely a departure from anything I know about General Motors vehicles and the ones that I have driven in the past. And here I am in the car right now, just kind of taking a look at things. It's very comfortable to sit in this car. This car has a very good seat in it, at least that's my initial impression. The instrument cluster is very nice and easy to read. Looks like it's rather warm out at the moment, though the car is sitting in the sun, so that probably biases the temperature reading a fair bit. Have some buttons on the steering wheel, things like that. I went ahead and put the key in the switch just to make sure that I was okay with that, that it wouldn't shut down unexpectedly, because I don't know how long it runs when you start it up with the uh, keyless start option, the remote start. There's the radio, just a CD player, no tape deck or anything like that. Not that anybody should be surprised does have an auxiliary input on it though. Come on, focus. I haven't actually tried listening to the radio yet, and then down there at the bottom are the climate controls for the car, and I believe this car has the dual zone climate control system fitted to it. It's been a while since I looked at the manual for this car and I skimmed it, so I'm not 100% sure of that. If I'm wrong though, I'm sure someone will be along to correct me in fairly short order. Anyway, the fan has a pretty much infinitely variable control. You can turn it all the way down to where it's silent. You can put it up a little bit in the middle there. It gets a little bit louder. It does seem to have an infinitely variable fan control on it. And then you can turn it all the way open, which is just rip-roaring loud. I will say that just sitting here in the sun without the car moving and looking at the uh, yard, this car does not air condition very well. It's not blowing very cold air. My truck would be out air conditioning it by a pretty wide margin. But let's go ahead and get this thing on the road. And of course we want to be plenty careful while we do that. As this is, as previously mentioned, my grandfather's car. And he might kill me if I were to inadvertently crash it into some unfortunately immovable object. And, of course, if my grandfather killed me, that would put a damper on the amount of UXW Bill videos that you would get to see. There's something making an interesting noise under hood. It almost sounds like an engine rumbling. That's very quiet. I don't know if that'd be some kind of pump running or what that is. Okay, there's the radio turned on, and it does appear that it supports 
RDS data broadcast. Oh, look at that, there's my mother and Ruby. Alright, we're out here on the highway now. Let's just go ahead and open this thing up and see what it'll do. Got a nice little bark to it, I'd say. Not doing very well in the fuel economy department. <laughs> we just tend to woof on it like that. And right now this car is running on 85% uh, ethanol fuel. It is rated to do that. In a moment I'll take it out on the interstate here and uh, just see how well it does getting on the big highway. Alright, here we go. Getting out on the big road now. how well it handles these curves. Well, it handles them a little better than my truck. Speaking of my truck, one thing I've got to say I'm not very impressed with on this car already is the air conditioner. My truck, which was manufactured in 2002, making it basically 10 years old as of this writing, air conditions quite a bit better than this car does. And my dad kind of hinted at that because he mentioned that when a person gets into this car and starts it up and turns the air conditioning on, the air conditioning system in this automobile actually defaults to recirculate mode. I've got it pulling in air from the outdoors right now and it claims that it is 88 degrees Fahrenheit outside right now, which is not exactly hugely hot weather that this thing would have to deal with. I really don't know how well this would work, and I would assume the system on this car is working properly, given how new it is in places where the temperature is much higher than it is here in Illinois in the summertime. Places like Arizona. I'm also not at all crazy about how the cruise control is set up on this car, as well as the plethora of steering wheel buttons. I much prefer the traditional GM cruise control that used to be located on the turn signal and windshield wiper stock. But it seems like everybody else does this and GM finally fell in line with it. What can I say? I'm just not very crazy about it. And there are definitely way too many buttons on this steering wheel. I can see this contributing fairly seriously to distracted driving. Well, now that I finally allowed the air conditioning system to go over to the recirculation mode, the car is a lot more comfortable now than it was. But it's still not as cold as I'd expect it to be. Another thing that I'm not particularly crazy about, the camera adjusts itself there, so you can see me going down the uh, highway here, or rather the interstate. Call me silly, call me completely out of my mind, but I absolutely do not care for the OnStar system. I realize that it can be a tremendous benefit in the case of an accident, but it's just a little too big brother for me, especially with some of the stuff that uh, class action lawsuits have claimed that uh, OnStar people have done, such as listening in to things that are going on inside OnStar equipped automobiles. That would be a deal breaker for me. If, if GM told me that I had to take a car with OnStar, I would be like, well, I guess I'm going to shop somewhere else in the market. I also don't know what that little thing up there is for. I don't know if that's supposed to be some sort of sensor so that the car can hear me talking, or what that might be. I will say this for the car. I've been driving through areas where there's been road destruction going on and stuff like that, and overall the car has handled the bumps and the rough, gro the rough grooved surfaces quite well. The steering on the car is also decently responsive. All in all, I think it handles okay. It's not a particularly exciting ride. It's definitely closer toward that of a road car, but when it comes to just driving down the highway like this, I definitely prefer something of a simple road car feeling as I'm driving along to be insulated from most of the bumps and to feel the road, but not have the road totally overcome my driving experience. Okay, in the time that has elapsed since I started driving this car, I've developed a couple of other thoughts and opinions about certain things, most notably the behavior of the radio and the transmission. Two very important parts of the vehicle, though I might give slight preference to the radio. I tuned the radio into a radio station that is local to the city where I am presently located, and the radio was doing something very annoying. It was sitting there on a local radio station, no less, 
and switching between stereo and monophonic reception up and down and up and down and it just it just got very tiresome to listen to that repeated switching how hard is this to figure out either keep it in monophonic mode or let it switch to stereo or do a gradual blend and it did not seem to be doing any gradual blending it just dropped the stereo image like a stone so I'm not very fond of the radio reception in this car, at least not so far. It does seem to have pretty decent pull when listening to distant stations, so I'm not at all sure why it can't get a local station right. Now, because there are too many people on YouTube without life who would undoubtedly have something to say about it, I have cleaned up this little console area before I talk about the transmission. I'm not real fond of the transmission in this car either. First of all, I don't like the fact that the shifting indicator is located up here in the instrument cluster. In my opinion, if you're going to have a console mounted shifter, then it needs to be labeled down here as to what position the actual shift handle is in. Second of all, when this shift handle is operated, I don't know if I'm telling a computer to do the shifting on my behalf or whatever, but this thing feels very light and cheesy. It doesn't feel like I'm operating a precision mechanism. Now it is an automatic transmission, so you're not going to be operating it a whole lot. But one thing that I do when I'm coming down to a stop in a vehicle with an automatic transmission is I tend to shift to neutral, especially if I'm coming up to a red light that I feel is going to take a long time to change back to green. It's just easier on the car that way doesn't let it sit there and work against an infinite load for as long as you happen to be sitting on the brake pedal. There are definitely times when this transmission feels very uncertain about what it's doing, or it jumps between different gears. And again, I don't particularly care for either one of those feelings. I can feel it shifting, and it, it just feels strange the way the, uh, the car and probably the computer that operates the transmission has decided to shift gears depending on what the car is doing. So I'm not real crazy about that either. So far, I think the best thing I can say about this car is that it seems to handle fairly well, and it drives okay, and it's pretty quiet. I'm, I've become quite used to all the wind noise in my truck because the door doesn't shut right, but so far, I would, have, I would be afraid to say that I would probably not buy one of these cars if I was in the market to actually buy a car. Let's go ahead and have a look at some of the stuff that's under hood, if there's anything you can see other than various shields and baffles and noise blockers and things. Well, there's more than I thought there is to look at under here. You can actually see the braking system, master cylinder, fluid reservoir, ABS stuff. You can see a little bit of the engine's exhaust manifold. The oil filter looks nice and easy to get at, at least. There's the battery and the electrical center. And I was wrong about this. I think I said that this car had a 3.5 liter engine in it, and I'm not sure that's correct. Well, it's not correct for this car. Because right there it says very plainly that this thing has a 3.6 liter V6 engine in it. And as you can see, it has the VVT, or variable valve timing, designation on it as well. This cover probably just pops off to reveal more of the working parts of the engine, but I'm, I'm not going to bother to take it off. There's no sense in going to that kind of trouble. But there is more stuff visible underneath this hood than I would have expected to see. However, there is not an underhood light of any kind in the car. All right, so it's getting kind of dark out. I'm running out of daylight here, and it's probably time to give my closing thoughts on this car, because I've certainly rattled on and on long enough. I would give GM points for the fact that this thing actually looks like a car and doesn't look completely goofy. I think the currently produced goofiest looking car award would have to go to something along the lines of the Nissan Juke, which is the goofiest looking car I have ever seen, at least in recent times. I have a fur head galloping along behind me. You never know when he's going to show up. You know what's better than an Impla? I have no idea. The Jeep. Now I certainly realize and respect that opinions can differ, but if I had the choice of two late model relatively recent production cars, my honest opinion is that I would go with the Key Keeper's Mercury Grand Marquis over the Impala any day of the week. I think the Grand Marquis, despite not being the technologically advanced car that the Impala probably is, 
simply feels like it's better made and has a slightly better ride. One thing I will give the Impala points for, both of these cars have electronic accelerators in them, and although Chevrolet totally missed the boat on how the shifting handle ought to feel, I do feel that they nailed the feeling of the accelerator. In the Mercury, you can tell the accelerator's electronic. In the Impala, it's a little bit harder, but it's still perceptible because when you engage the cruise control, it doesn't suck down the pedal like a traditional mechanical linkage system would. So those are my thoughts on the car. I will, see, I will say that GM deserves credit for one other thing while I'm at it. I appreciate the fact greatly that they did not feel the need to put those goofy circular air vents in this car. I can't stand the looks of those things. Well, that's about it. That's about everything I could say about this car, good or bad. In the end, I'd say that it gets probably not the UXW Bill seal of approval, but it's a serviceable car, and I'd give it a meh. What do you say to that, Keykeeper? <laughs> I don't have any idea. Uh oh, that thing's playing the part of the big brown piece of junk. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I would certainly appreciate hearing your thoughts.